we have breaking news from Ukraine, which, well, I should say from Russia, uh, which is that Ukraine has lost over 40%, 40% of the territory in Russia's Kursk region that it captured in a surprised incursion in August. Uh, this is as Russians have mounted waves of counter assaults, according to a Ukrainian military official. Uh, this is reported in Reuters. And I want to take this opportunity to play a clip from uh, the Council on Foreign Relations. Um, the speaker is Charles Kupchan, who was, uh, he's, at, of course, at the Council on Foreign Relations, but was previously uh, a high ranking Europe focused official on Obama's national security team. And I, I think it's quite funny that you have people like Sebastian Gorka who are kind of urging for more confrontation with Russia, Republicans, while Democrats such as Mr. Kupchan, the Ukrainians are kind of, you know, signing the death warrant of Ukraine. Uh, it seems that they are, they, the Democrats, in a complete reversal, the Democrats are prepared for this war to end and the Republicans are trying to keep it going, um, which is, of course, the exact opposite of what we've seen for the past two years. So I'm going to go ahead and play this clip because it's so um, damning. This is, again, the Council on Foreign Relations. And in some ways, I think the Ukrainians would be better off using the military assets that they have, the personnel that they have to defend the front line. And we're hearing the Russians are now gaining ground, in some cases a mile a day. And perhaps Kursk is turning into a sideshow that has distracted Ukrainian forces, but didn't really distract Russian forces. And I think one could argue that uh, the Ukrainians really ought to be attempting to hold that line rather than take deep strikes in Russia. My, my final comment is that I, I believe that this move is further indication that the United States has a policy toward Ukraine, but it does not have a strategy. It does not have a, uh, a clear way of matching limited means to limited ends. Uh, and I think that President Trump is going to be right, making the right move to try to negotiate an end game. The mistake I think he's making, or at least he's saying he might make, is to cut off the flow of aid to Ukraine. It seems to me that a Ukraine that is able to defend itself and hold the line is essential to getting a ceasefire. Yeah, I definitely want to um, get a little bit more into what Trump might do, but I just I'm hearkening back to a um, a, a CFR event you did with um, General Breedlove in which he said this is going to end the way the West wants it to end. And um, I think this is, you know, the the whether you agree with the kind of long agonizing, um, as Mac put it, decision. Um, Max clearly doesn't agree, and you do agree. Um, I don't think they know the way the wet the, the at least the U.S. doesn't know how it wants it to end. I don't believe that it's correct that it will end the way the West wants it to. I think there is a pathway to that outcome, and that would involve a U.S decision and a NATO decision to put hundreds of thousands of combat troops on the ground and go to war with Russia. I don't think that's going to happen. Gonna and as a consequence, I think we need to face up to the reality that Russia has the upper hand. Time is not on Ukraine's side. The sooner this war comes to an end, the better for Ukraine. Let's face it, Ukraine is getting pummeled, right? They're running out of manpower. Their electricity grid is getting taken down. Uh, this is not a war that Ukraine can afford to fight on an indefinite basis. Yeah, so there's that. Uh, Ukraine, this is not a war that Ukraine is able to fight on a long-term basis. This is, again, what Kit and I have been saying for years, um, now being uttered by some of the foreign policy leaders that uh, brought us to this point. Um, I see that one of our commenters has noticed Max Boot on the stream. We had a excellent video, mm -hmm. which I would encourage people to rewatch, exposing his wife as a 
uh, foreign agent of the South Korean government. Um, and she's I, going you know, to jail. She's going to jail. Yeah, <laughs> fantastic. But it's just like I mean, I just 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 like really quick, Alex. I just think that, that um, it's really interesting that this video that you've just displayed. Um, it, it is just one of so many examples at the moment of like mainstream sources stating Ukraine needs to give up any and all hope of regaining territory and make peace, right? And this has been and like, and we have been saying that people like you and I have been saying this for so long, and we've been told, well, this tears up the international rules based order and this cannot be countenanced, and then now it's like mainstream that Ukraine has to give up some territory and even Ukrainian leaders are echoing this. And it's just, it's, it's absolutely unbelievable. Um, this again ties in with what we've discussed last week about the large number of countries that are starting Western countries that are accepting Russian energy again, because the alternatives are too expensive. Um, yeah, like it, the, the, the entire war narrative is unraveling in spectacular fashion at rapacious speed right now like yeah. it's it's quite unreal like it's difficult it's difficult to keep up with quite quite which is why you and i have active measures as our primary resource um Absolutely. but I, I i i liked how uh his co-host on that podcast uh kind of subtly called him out she's like hey a year ago you were saying this war was going to end on the west terms uh mm -hmm. And now you're saying that Ukraine is pu being pummeled and needs to give up because the Russians are gaining a mile a day. Um, yeah. So we have. On I mean, a similar... I mean, Go ahead. if I if I mean, if I really wanted to mess with him, I would say, like, how would you communicate to your wife in jail that Ukraine is losing this? Like, like, I mean, how would you soften the the blow? Right. Mac, dear Max Boo, um, you scumbag. But like that. Yeah. Um. So on a similar note, we have uh, Jake Sullivan, who is Biden's national security advisor, um, blaming Ukrainians for their failing war. Uh, Ukraine finds itself in a more challenged position on the battlefield, he said, uh, suggesting there's not a, a straight line between those weapons systems and how it does on, on the battlefield. According to him, the most direct link between Ukraine's achievements and contributions lies in mobilization and human resources. Uh, at the same time, he does not believe that early approval for any particular weapon system would have impacted the battlefield. Have we seen a marked difference since we have provided tanks to Ukraine in terms of the battlefield? Similarly, on F-16s, have we seen a marked difference? Our view has been that there's not one weapon system that makes a difference in this battle. It's about manpower, and Ukraine needs to do more in our view, to firm up its lines in terms of the number of forces it has on the front lines. So he's basically arguing that Ukraine should be sacrificing more of its young men. Um, he's probably in agree agreement with Seb Gorka that, you know, they should fight to the last 12-year-old. Uh, and I think it's quite funny how he's blaming Ukraine here for all of this. Mm. It's, it's, it's almost as if the Democrats are trying to wash their hands of this whole mess and say hey you know what it's time to it's time to wrap it up um or or at least they're preparing for that inevitability and and are trying to come off as blameless in that um again if the words of people like Kit and I were heated we th there would be hundreds of thousands of m more Ukrainian men alive today uh, and certainly a lot fewer people walking around Kiev with uh, missing limbs. Um, so, yeah, it remains to be seen what happens there. Uh, we have the Biden administration uh, not only greenlighting attackums for use inside of uh, Russia, but also sending more landmines so um, that future generations of Ukrainian children can grow up with missing limbs. Um, and, and I mean, it's, it's dark, man. It's really dark. Yeah. Uh, do you remember, uh, one of our early episodes, I pulled up a, uh, us, uh, a Pentagon document that was talking mm -hmm. about paying for children's demining trainings in Ukraine. Um, 
I I only yeah. just remember this, so it's not in the show no, notes. No, I but... actually I actually I actually pitched a, a a proposal to the Pentagon offering them half of like what they're asking in order to like remove like all of these mines, and like they never got back to me, which is dis disappointing um, to say the least. But um, um, but in, in yeah, all, don't quit your yeah. day job. No, well, yeah, um, <laughs> been there, done that. But like, yeah, it's like it's it it, it, it it's really interesting, and we have been warning um, and and for, forecasting this for a very long time. Act measures the complete shift in media narrative, like on Ukraine, and like it's now happening like all over um, to an extent. Well, as I say, um, it's difficult to keep. Uh, it's difficult to like keep like a, an eye on constantly because it's just so radical the shift from well anything beyond the return of Crimea and and the, the Donbass territories is a defeat therefore we have to support that to well actually Ukraine can still win even if it doesn't get anything back right you know right. yeah well I I think I think uh, we'll probably see you know maybe we can convince Putin and Zelensky that they've both won you know yes. Um, yes. it's, it's just a win-win for everyone, except, uh, for the Ukrainian limbs. Hey everyone. Um, if you enjoyed this video or, or any of our other content, uh, please give us a follow on Twitter or subscribe to us on YouTube. It will help us beat the algorithm oligarchs. Thank you.